Hold on to your Ushankas because the Soviet Union was like the wildest inventor at the mechanical circus for a whopping 70 years. They churned out designs that made jaws drop, not in awe, but in sheer disbelief. From winged fortresses to screw-driven trucks that'd make a DIY enthusiast blush. And oh yes, flying saucers too. The Soviets weren't afraid to toss the rule book out the window. Get ready because we're diving into a delightful parade of 20 Soviet vehicles that'll have you scratching your head and questioning reality itself. Number 20, the 1K17 Shati. Hold on to your laser goggles because if sci-fi flicks have any say, future battlefields will look like a neon laser show on steroids. Modern armies are tinkering with lasers, but guess who's already got the laser tank memo? Yep, the Soviets were playing laser tag before it was cool. Meet the one K-17 Shati, the Soviet laser tank straight out of the funky 70s. Now this bad boy wasn't designed to crisp enemy soldiers like overcooked fries. Nope, it had a dazzling lineup of 13 lasers that could put a disco ball to shame. These lasers worked some magic through rubies. Not the bling kind, mind you, but synthetically grown ones weighing as much as a small elephant. When these ruby-powered light beams danced in pulses, the shoddy could do some serious damage. It could ruin the day of enemy vehicle sensors and missiles faster than you could say lights out, and even throw in some instant can't-see-anything effects for enemy troops. Talk about a dazzling entrance. But hey, this cosmic contraption didn't get to join the laser party for some legit reasons. First off, growing rubies hefty enough to power a laser light show ain't exactly a budget-friendly hobby. And guess what? Blinding people with laser beams isn't exactly a sport approved by the Geneva Convention crew. Turns out, making your enemies blind doesn't exactly win you Friend of the Year awards. Lucky for us all, when the Soviet Union did its mic drop in 1991, it took the mass laser tank shenanigans plan with it. So while we won't be seeing disco laser battles anytime soon, at least we can still boogie on without worrying about getting blinded on the dance floor. Number 19. The Antonov A-40 Around 80 years ago, a remarkable Soviet prototype emerged with an audacious goal, to investigate the feasibility of gliding tanks directly onto the battlefield. This unconventional concept involved utilizing bombers to airdrop tanks mid-battle, and intriguingly, some trials even saw tanks being released into bodies of water to assess their impact durability. In 1942, Oleg Antonov, a visionary glider designer, took this idea to new heights, he conceptualized an ingenious attachment, a cradle comprising biplane wings and a twin tail, designed to be affixed to a light tank's chassis. This transformative creation, known as the A-40, was intended to be towed behind a bomber and subsequently released, gliding gracefully into enemy territory. Once landed, the tank could jettison its wings, transitioning into a standard tank ready for combat. The maiden flight of the A-40, however, encountered a significant setback. The bomber tasked with towing the tank had to release it prematurely due to the immense drag the tank generated. Instead of soaring, the tank's descent resembled that of an anchor plunging into the depths. Miraculously, the tank and its operator survived the fall, but this marked the end of the project's development. Ironically, the A-40 project was eventually shelved in favor of a more conventional weaponry approach. Undoubtedly, the tank driver breathed a sigh of relief as this unconventional experiment gave way to a more pragmatic path forward. Number 18. The Mil Mi-10 When the Soviet military required heavy lifting prowess, they turned to the Mil Mi-10 helicopter. Despite its appearance resembling a hybrid between a helicopter and a spider, its elongated legs served a practical purpose. Originating in the late 1950s, it was crafted to transport large and bulky loads that surpassed the capacity of the Union's biggest helicopter at the time, the Mil Mi-6. In contrast to the Mi-6's 13-ton limit, the Mi-10's innovative design, complete with an external platform, enabled it to carry up to 15 tons of oddly shaped cargo. Its towering 30-foot height and extended legs facilitated easy attachment and transportation of diverse items, ranging from vehicles to entire constructed structures. This remarkable capability led to the Mi-10 becoming a sensation, showcased in demonstrations and air shows globally to highlight its unique attributes. Although not widely mass-produced, 55 Mi-10s were manufactured during the 1960s, and some remained operational until 2013. Number 17, 
Mendeleev tank. The evolution of tank design is evident when we examine the early Russian attempts, like the Mendeleev Rybinsk tank of 1911. Resembling a sizable rectangular structure, think of a 42 foot by 32 foot shoebox, this tank featured robust 100 millimeter armor. Its purpose was to house a crew of eight, managing the 120 millimeter Canet gun at the front, complemented by a light machine gun in the turret above. The Canet gun boasted impressive articulation capabilities, able to swivel left, right, up, and down, utilizing a sophisticated recoil system instead of a fixed mount. The pinnacle of innovation was its pneumatic piston suspension, permitting the tank's wheels to adjust in height, effectively adapting to diverse terrains. This transformative feature enabled the tank to take on a fortified stance, becoming a mobile fortress. Furthermore, it was designed to synchronize with railway tracks, enabling self-propulsion or towing by a train. However, its colossal weight of 173 tons, nearly triple the size of contemporary tanks, hampered its mobility and agility, ultimately grounding the project. Financial backing from sponsors and the government remained elusive, relegating this impressive design to the realm of paper plans. Number 16, T-42. In 1951, the United States introduced the T-42 prototype, a 36-ton medium tank aiming to amplify the armor of the popular M46 Patton tank. It's worth noting that the T-42 name had been used previously for a Soviet tank in 1930, but the resemblance ended there. Delve into the blueprints, and you encounter the vision of the T-42 Super Heavy Tank, a gargantuan concept weighing 112 tons. This behemoth boasted dimensions of approximately 60 feet in length and 12 feet in width, dwarfing contemporary tanks. Remarkably, its distinctiveness stemmed from multiple turrets festooning the front. Various configurations flaunted between three to five turrets, with the primary armament usually featuring a 107mm 1910-30 field gun. Smaller turrets accommodated 45mm anti-tank guns and up to five DTM machine guns. The frontal armor, a substantial three and a half inches thick, endowed the tank with an air of invincibility. Beneath the surface, multiple diesel-fueled engines churned out a staggering 2,000 horsepower, far surpassing the standards of its era. Yet the T-42's colossal weight impeded its practicality. Predicted top speeds of 17 miles per hour proved overly optimistic, with actual performance plateauing around 12 miles per hour. This dearth of mobility, a crucial tactical trait, led to the tank's impracticality. The prospect of maneuvering such a colossal machine over bridges and in combat scenarios remained implausible and costly. Ultimately, despite its firepower and engineering marvels, the T-42 Super Heavy tank never progressed beyond the conceptual stage, serving as a reminder of the fine line between innovation and practicality. Number 15, Mil MI-32. While pioneering a twin-rotor helicopter marked a significant stride in 1960s innovation, the notion of a trinity of main rotors, even by modern standards, appears audacious. The Soviet Union, however, nearly realized this improbable vision with the Mil Mi-32, conceptualized in 1982. Behold, an isosceles triangle crowned with rotor blades, each point a potential axis a sky crane-like creation intended for military applications, capable of hoisting sky-high weights up to 60 tons. The cargo, suspended externally from the three interconnected gondolas via beams, posed an innovative solution. Measuring 131 feet, the beams attached to the cockpit, and 118 feet for the third doubled as reservoirs for fuel and equipment. The six D136 turboshaft engines imbued the rotors with an awe-inspiring collective might of 60,000 horsepower, culminating in a range surpassing 745 miles and a peak speed of 140 miles per hour. Though presented for approval to the Soviet Council of Ministers and Central Committee, the Milmi 32's journey halted at conceptualization. Despite promising feedback, the ambitious tri rotor chopper never materialized beyond blueprints, taking its place alongside other eccentric Soviet mechanical concepts. Number 14, VVP 6, 
Project GDP-6, hatched in the mid-1960s by the Yakovlev Bureau, envisioned an innovative heavyweight helicopter tailored for specialized payloads. Enter the VVP-6, an elongated 160-foot fuselage with a breadth akin to a Boeing 777, donning a grand assembly of six rotor blades. The symphony of rotors, 24 turbofan engines in total, promised unparalleled stability and maneuverability through varied rotations. This daring design sidestepped the conventional need for a tail. The VVP-6, poised to lift loads up to 50 tons, offered a platform for diverse tasks, including housing nuclear-tipped missiles, troop transportation, and aircraft carriage. Yet, the unwieldy design, akin to a flying brick, diminished its aerial grace. While confined to the realm of blueprints, the VVP-6 embodies the audacious spirit of Soviet engineering, an evocative testament to innovative thinking and military foresight. Number 13. The T-35 the T-35 was a Soviet multi-turreted heavy tank that served in the Red Army in the early days of World War II. A design that is both intimidating and awe-inspiring, it's often described as a land battleship. The T-35 most striking feature was its array of five turrets, an unusual configuration for tanks of any era. Armed with a mixture of cannons and machine guns, these turrets were designed to provide the T-35 with an unprecedented firing arc, allowing it to engage multiple targets simultaneously. The central turret housed a 76.2mm gun, while two smaller turrets, each equipped with a 45mm gun, were mounted coaxially on either side. Another pair of machine gun turrets were located at the front and back. Despite its formidable appearance and armaments, the T-35 had its drawbacks. Its complex design made it mechanically unreliable and difficult to maintain, and its large size made it an easy target. It was also very slow, with a top speed of just about 30 kilometers per hour. The T-35 represents an ambitious attempt to push the boundaries of tank design. Although it wasn't successful in its intended role, the land battleship remains a powerful symbol of the Soviet Union's early military innovation and willingness to experiment with novel and audacious design concepts. Number 12. The Bartini Beriev VVA-14 A lot of these experimental Soviet vehicles look like they've been plucked straight out of sci-fi films, but the Bartini Beriev VVA-14 might just have inspired one. It closely resembles Star Wars' famous Millennium Falcon, but it was created in 1972, almost five years before Star Wars hit the silver screen. It looks like George Lucas has some serious explaining to do. The VVA stands for Vertikalno Vizlatayushchaya Amphibia, or Vertical Takeoff Amphibious Aircraft if you're not fluent in Russian, like me. Like its title suggests, it could take off from the water and fly at altitudes of up to 33,000 feet. But it could also fly just a few feet over the ocean waves using that previously mentioned wing and ground effect. It achieved this thanks to two large pods you can see connected to the fuselage. The two engines at the front create a cushion of air by directing the exhaust into narrow channels between the fuselage and the pods, allowing the plane to skirt over the waves. It needed this sea-skirting ability to destroy the United States Polaris submarine missiles, which kept the Soviet Union awake at night during the Cold War. Initially, the VVA-14 was designed with 12 lift engines for vertical takeoff and landing abilities, but these were never installed. And after its designer passed away in 1974, this project hit a wall. The two prototypes that were built were retired in 1987, although their legacy clearly lives on in the Star Wars franchise. Number 11, the Mill Vive 12. Introducing the Mill V-12, a remarkable feat within the realm of aviation technology. Helicopters combining hovercraft-like vertical takeoff and landing with airplane-like speed have always intrigued. Amid these, the Mill V-12, taking flight in 1968, commands attention for its colossal size and ambition. As the largest helicopter ever crafted, it emerged from the Mill Moscow helicopter plant in the Soviet Union. Dubbed the Homer, it proudly embodies Soviet engineering prowess. The V-12's purpose was to transport substantial oversized payloads, a boon in military logistics. With a staggering maximum takeoff weight of approximately 105 metric tons and the capacity to ferry up to 106 passengers, its magnitude eclipses other helicopters. Its design, a blend of helicopter and airplane attributes, showcases twin rotors on transverse wings, affording lift and control to manage its enormity. 
Yet despite its impressive potential, the V12 remained confined to the prototype phase. A pair of prototypes exist, showcased in Russian museums today. Regardless, the V12 endures as an enduring emblem of aviation ambition and engineering excellence. Number 10. The Zil 2906 Screwdrive Vehicle Hold on to your babushkas because when it came to pushing the engineering envelope, the Soviets were like mad scientists with a dash of sci-fi flair. Picture this, the Zil 2906, a contraption that could have easily moonlighted as a prop in a futuristic novel. Flashback to the late 1960s. Cue groovy music and meet the Zil 2906, a rebel against the wheel and track norms. This bad boy decided to say nyet to conventional and rocked a pair of giant screws instead. Yep, you read that right, screws. No, it wasn't aiming to build a bookshelf. It was gearing up to navigate some seriously tough terrain. As these colossal screws spun, they did a mesmerizing dance, bulldozing the ground beneath them. It's like watching a lawnmower on a mission, only cooler. This quirky dance move allowed the Zil 2906 to conquer marshes, snowdrifts, and even do a little water waltz. Think of it as the James Bond of vehicles, always up for an adventure. Sized like a compact car, this bad boy could squeeze in two brave souls in its belly. And boy, did it have them covered. With a fully sealed cabin, it laughed in the face of environmental challenges. Rain, snow, sleet, swamp, you name it, the Zil 2906 could handle it. Plus, it had a little secret. It could float on water. Yes, you read that right. A floating screw mobile? Move over, ducks. Sure, it wasn't winning any speed races, but who needs speed when you're the king of tricky terrain? This quirky Soviet invention might not have been a military superstar, but it sure gets a gold star for thinking outside the box. Or should I say, outside the wheel? It's like the rebellious teenager of engineering, making its mark with unconventional moves and showing the world that sometimes a good screw can take you places. Number 9. The 2B1. OK. Back in the heyday of the Soviet Union, they had a penchant for thinking that bigger is always better. And they certainly took it to the next level with their creation, the 2B1 Oka. This colossal piece of experimental artillery was cooked up in 1957, right around the time when the Cold War was starting to sizzle. The Americans had just unveiled their atomic Annie Mortar, a behemoth that could launch those cute little 280 millimeter atomic shells. You know, just your everyday wagon that can shoot mini nuclear surprises. Well, not to be outdone, the Soviet military decided to respond with not one but two self-propelled nuclear artillery systems. Overachievers, really. Enter the star of our show, the 2B1 Oka. This bad boy had a barrel so long, it could practically double as a highway overpass, a whopping 65 feet. To put things in perspective, that's like comparing an entire Sherman tank to a kid's tricycle. But hey, size matters, right? The Oka flaunted its ability to fire ginormous 420 millimeter rounds, each one heavier than a mammoth suitcase at 1,650 pounds. And just for fun, these rounds could deliver an atomic explosion souvenir a whopping 28 miles away. Distance goals, anyone? Now, before you start envisioning this beast as the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, there were a couple of tiny hiccups. Loading this monstrosity was about as swift as watching a snail in a marathon, a laborious process that made you appreciate just how fast a sloth moves. It could only manage one shot every five minutes. Patience, comrades, patience. But wait, there's more. The recoil from this cannon could give a roller coaster a run for its money. The poor vehicle couldn't handle the shock, and with each shot, it suffered a little more. The chassis was tougher than your grandma's old kettle, sure, but even it had its limits. Sometimes, the recoil was so intense, it played a game of let's rip the gearbox from its mountings. Not the best party trick, I must say. In a twist of fate, this wild and wacky design was ditched in the swinging 60s, as big guns took a back seat to the cool kids on the block, the big missiles. So while the TWP, BB-1, Oka never got to join the combat party, I'm pretty sure just parading it around was enough to make Soviet enemies do a double take. After all, nothing says don't mess with us, quite like unveiling a cannon that could also pass for a bridge. Number 8. The M15 Belfagor the M15 Belfagor, often dubbed the world's ugliest plane, doesn't win any beauty contests. Originating from Poland, a Soviet satellite state, this government-designed crop duster aimed to replace the trusty An-2 biplane. 
However, the M15 Belfagor failed to impress. It retained the biplane structure but swapped a propeller-driven turboprop engine for a turbofan jet engine, an odd choice for an agricultural aircraft. Despite its unconventional engine, the Belfagor could haul up to three tons of pesticides in its spacious wing-separated pylons. Despite high hopes, the plane's design turned out to be disastrous. It had a paltry maximum range of 215 nautical miles, half of the AN-2's range. The jet engine was more complex and costly to maintain compared to a turboprop, while the quirky fuselage design confined its utility to crop dusting. In essence, it became a high-maintenance, costly, one-trick wonder. While the Soviet Union initially aimed for mass production, the Polish plane's fate was sealed in 1981. Number 7. The Lund-class Ekranoplan Now shifting gears to the Cold War era, we encounter the remarkable Lund-class Ekranoplan. This colossal craft, spanning 242 feet and boasting a 144-foot wingspan, barely fits within a standard American football field. Despite appearances, this extraordinary machine is no ordinary aircraft. Blending boats and planes, the Ekranoplan harnessed the wing and ground effect. By flying closer to the surface, it harnessed air pressure between its uniquely shaped wings and the ground, creating an air cushion that allowed it to skim just above lakes or oceans. With eight turbojet engines at its helm, this behemoth surged at a staggering 340 miles per hour and boasted a whopping 110-ton carrying capacity. Notably, the six twin cylinders atop weren't for festivities but concealed missile launchers. These formidable hybrids were crafted to eliminate invading U.S. aircraft carriers in Soviet waters. While one prototype entered military service in 1987, the collapse of the Soviet regime in 1991 left this low-flying marvel to fade into obscurity. Number 6. The Zvino Project Back in the 1930s, when folks were still recovering from World War I and dreaming of air battles, Soviet Russia put on its forward-thinking hat and started cooking up experimental aircraft. Why? Well, in case round two of the World War extravaganza hits the stage. And guess what? Cue the dramatic music round two did arrive. Russia was all set to soar, but one of its creations looked more like a circus act than a war machine. Behold the Zvino Project, also known as the Chain Link Project. Now picture this. A bomber that decided bombs weren't its thing. It wanted to carry a team of smaller fighter planes instead. Talk about squad goals. So what's the big idea? Well, the thinkers behind this madcap plan realized that bombers were like the thrift store of fuel efficiency compared to their smaller fighter pals. So they pimped up the bomber and turned it into an airborne aircraft carrier. Once airborne, these mini fighters would lock onto the carrier using some fancy fasteners. It's like the aviation version of a mid-air meetup. With the crew all belted in, the bomber played taxi and flew them into the aerial showdown, making pit stops for a fuel top-up like a flying gas station. Imagine the view from below. It's like spotting one pesky hornet and realizing there's a whole hive on the way. Buzzkill, right? These super moms of the sky could carry up to five little fighter sidekicks, each loaded with a whopping 1,000 pounds of bombs. Talk about having your back covered. These crafty contraptions actually strutted their stuff at the start of World War II and showed the world what they were made of. But as the tech boom of war hit its stride, these airborne taxis found themselves waving goodbye to the spotlight. Faster, sleeker fighter jets stole the show, and the Zvino project didn't get a sequel. Maybe it retired to the Soviet circus, who knows? Now, it is time for today's subscriber's pick. Take a look at the K-84 Ekaterinburg, a nuclear-powered marvel that may just remind you of that iconic ship from Disney's Atlantis. But let's set the record straight. This vessel is more than just a cool visual. That massive sphere you're eyeing? That's the acoustic chamber for the sonar array, a high-tech tool that translates underwater sound waves into vital navigational data. Think of it as the sub's secret weapon to glide stealthily beneath the waves. Now, before you dive too deep into daydreams of fantastical voyages, there's a twist in this tale. That very chamber responsible for the sub's underwater prowess was filled with a highly flammable liquid, a ticking suspenseful element right out of a thriller. Can you believe it? This seemingly otherworldly vessel was once on the brink of igniting into a fiery spectacle. Talk about a real-life adventure. What's more mind-boggling to you? The fact that these subs are like bombs within bombs, or the jaw-dropping revelation that a staggering 205 of these underwater wonders once sailed under Soviet banners. Share your opinions in the comment below. Number 5. The Tsar Tank 
Among the archives of military innovation, few inventions combine awe and amusement like the Tsar tank. Born in the Russian Empire during World War I, this experimental ground vehicle remains a testament to audacious engineering, albeit with limited practicality. Often known as the Netopir Bat or Lebedenko tank, named after its chief architect Nikolai Lebedenko, it embodies the spirit of daring yet unfeasible design. Diverging from the customary tank tread model, the Tsar tank showcases an eccentric tricycle layout. It boasts colossal front wheels, each spanning 9 meters, accompanied by a solitary smaller rear wheel for steering. Its appearance, more reminiscent of Victorian-era fantasy than pragmatic military machinery, was fortified with cannons, machine guns, and armor. The concept aimed to surmount rugged terrains and trenches, with the large front wheels rolling over obstacles that would thwart conventional tanks. Nonetheless, real-world trials revealed the Tsar tank's unwieldiness and mechanical intricacy, leading to frequent entanglements during testing. While not a practical triumph, it endures as an engrossing illustration of atypical military innovation. Beyond its setbacks, it underscores the unbridled ingenuity driving engineers in their pursuit of groundbreaking warfare solutions. Number 4. Project Ekip Imagine a Soviet aircraft that seems plucked right out of a Martian sci-fi flick. Back in the distant year of 1978, the Russians unleashed their inner extraterrestrial and birthed a flying saucer that defied the norms of its time. Heck, it would turn heads even today. This thing wasn't your run-of-the-mill airplane with wings and tails, nope. This bad boy rocked a domed design that shouted, I'm not your average Joe plane. They took inspiration from stealthy bombers and sneaky reconnaissance birds. You know, the kind that play hide-and-seek with radars. The result? A sleek, elliptical beauty that basically said, Who needs a fuselage when you can have one massive wing? Now let's talk takeoff and landing. This oddball saucer had some tricks up its aerodynamic sleeve. With a turbojet engine doing its thing, it harnessed the power of air cushion tech, just like its aquatic cousin, the Akranoplan. Picture it, gliding off the ground or smoothly dipping into the water, all casual-like. All terrain, all the way. Why the fancy maneuvers, you ask? Well, turns out the Soviet military had a soft spot for cross-country adventurers, even if they looked like they hailed from Mars. They had dreams of this saucer whizzing through the skies with the efficiency of a frugal grandma at a yard sale. The math was simple. A measly 14 grams of fuel per passenger kilometer. Compare that to the guzzlers of the time slurping up 45 grams. Cha-ching, fuel savings. The Soviets dreamed big. Picture this. A supersized model, the L3, hosting a party of up to 400 passengers. And if that wasn't enough... They even planned to throw in some fancy extras, passengers cruising alongside their cars. Talk about taking your ride to the skies. But alas, the cosmic dance of fate had other plans. The Soviet Union's grand finale brought the curtains down on this starry-eyed endeavor. The EKIP program? Grounded, never to reach the heights it dreamed of. Just another wild ride that never quite got off the ground. Number 3. The Lund Class Ekranoplan. Within the realm of military technology, some inventions defy categorization, giving rise to entirely new classes. The Lund Class Ekranoplan, a monumental creation birthed by the Soviet Union, falls into this distinctive category. Blurring the boundaries between ship and aircraft, this Caspian Sea monster represents the realm of ground effect vehicles, GEVs. Emerging in 1987, the Lun harnessed ground-effect dynamics, the aerodynamic interplay between wings and surface, to glide at high speeds just above the sea's surface. Stretching 74 meters in length and weighing a staggering 380 tons, this machine amalgamated aircraft velocity with shipload capacity. Eight turbofans positioned forward of the wings empowered the Lun class to reach a maximum speed of 550 kilometers per hour, a remarkable feat for a craft primarily skimming the water. Embracing innovation, the Lund-class Ekranoplan sported six anti-ship missile launchers arranged in pairs atop its dorsal surface. This unorthodox strategy provided a swift, impactful countermeasure against adversary vessels. 
While unconventional, this Caspian Sea giant stands as a striking representation of audacious Soviet engineering. Its existence serves as a testament to the bold, inventive ethos characterizing Soviet military design. Number 2. Maz 2000 Even amid the realm of Soviet military marvels, a commercial endeavor managed to shine, the Maz 2000. Recall the colossal Maz trucks we discussed previously, like the 100-foot-long 24 by 24 monstrosities? Well, Minsky Avtomobilny Zavod, Maz, wasn't solely preoccupied with those. In 1985, they embarked on crafting the Maz 2000, also known as the Perestroika, a semi-trailer tractor truck that garnered attention when unveiled at the 1988 Paris Motor Show. Diverging from contemporaries, the Maz 2000 embraced a modular blueprint. This innovative approach rendered its engine, gearbox, and axles detachable on trolleys, facilitating swift adaptation to diverse tasks. The truck's fiberglass body, coupled with an aerodynamic design, propelled it to a remarkable top speed of over 80 miles per hour. Buoyed by its Paris Motor Show success, the Maz 2000 is poised to revolutionize global truck design. However, the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 drastically altered its trajectory. Funding evaporated, and the project couldn't secure the resources needed for production. Today, the two prototypes that graced the motor show endure as preserved relics in Minsk, a testament to audacious design in the face of geopolitical shifts. Well, in my humble opinion, the design of these trucks is still amazing. Number 1. Typhoon-Class Submarine Diving beneath the waves, we encounter the Typhoon-Class Submarine, a colossal manifestation of Soviet military machinery. Known as Akula Shark in the Soviet realm and designated Typhoon by NATO, these nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines reign as the largest of their kind ever manufactured. Enlisting in the late 1970s and early 80s, the Typhoon submarines were engineered to patrol beneath Arctic ice caps for extensive periods, poised to unleash their formidable payloads at a moment's notice. Designed with a double hull structure and multiple pressure hulls, these submarines proved remarkably durable and resilient even in the face of substantial damage. Submerged, a fully outfitted Typhoon-class submarine displaces over 48,000 tons of water and extends an impressive 175 meters. Accommodating a crew of 160, they house 20 intercontinental ballistic missile launchers, each primed with multiple nuclear warheads. Elevating comfort to an unexpected level, the Typhoons offer amenities uncommon for submarines, a gym, a bird aviary, and even a small swimming pool aimed at easing the crew's endurance during extended Arctic expeditions. Today, a lone Typhoon submarine remains active. While the Cold War chapter has drawn to a close, the Typhoon-class submarine persists as a symbol of bygone tensions and a testament to the remarkable engineering prowess of the Soviet Union. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.